This complete monster was an irresistible eBay find. It's a piece of industrial equipment for sanitising cold rooms and other places, and it's an ozone generator, but it's a very large scale one. And interesting because the, technically speaking, its output is lower than many of the sort of high frequency Chinese ones, but it's actually going to last a lot longer because of its construction. It's just physically more robust and the way the ozone plate works. So if I bring up this uh, energy meter and turn this on at its uh, isolation switch, it shows roughly 1.3 watts. That's the little neon indicator here and the time switch running. The time switch appears to be wired incorrectly. If I put it to zero, it goes on and there is going to be a fan noise and a slight hissing noise. I'm not sure how loud that's going to be. But basically speaking, air is being drawn in at a fan over this end and it's being blown out at a port over this end. And there is a strong smell of ozone, so I shall turn this off. Oh, 50 watts by the way, power consumption. Let's unplug this and we'll open it up and then I shall draw you the schematic of what's inside. It has a very thin cable for a piece of industrial equipment, but that is because it is literally just 50 watts. Let me put this down out of the way. And I'm going to have to turn this, I think. How's this going to look if I just open it up as it is? It's interlocked, by the way. That's not super bright, but that's okay. We can brighten it like this. Oh, too much. Let's tame it down just a little bit. We'll stop it about there. So what we have inside, double checks it's off, we have the isolator, which also locks the door so it can open if it's in the on position. Uh, we have the incoming cable from outside to that, a couple of earth connections, and then it feeds the fan via the time switch and also this, what I'm guessing is a bother ignition transformer. And that bother ignition transformer is referenced to ground, I would guess here. Oh, no, it's not. Uh, these two are actually going to the inner meshes with these clips. These springy metal clips that it's attached to. And they're inserted into these glass tubes. And there is stainless steel mesh inside the glass tubes. And hidden under here... Um, let's tip it up. Oh, this is so big. It's very big. Under here is a metal clamp around the outside the glass tube connected to the other leg of the transformer. And because there's a high voltage applied across that glass barrier, dielectric barrier, it will create a corona discharge on the stainless steel mesh inside. I can show you this. I'll do, draw a drawing out. But this is all sort of silicon in. It's kind of very handmade looking with end caps. This looks like plumbing pipes. But the Air is coming in from this fan here, which had a filter on it, a manky filter with a burst cover, and uh, the filter itself was ripped, but that's all right. It's a 240 volt fan because this is a 240 volt unit. The air comes in here, goes down, and blows through the ports at the end here, travels through the tubes, plus, past the corona discharge, and then goes out this tube here and out the vent. I'm guessing maybe bigger versions have multiple of these tubes and they just increase the number of tubes and a bigger bit of pipe but it's very simple construction let's go back to the bench and i'll do you a sketch of the circuitry so you can see what it looks like one moment please okay let's explore it's a very simple unit it doesn't use high frequency power supplies which means that it's going to be very reliable the boiler ignition transformer is continuously rated i'm guessing it's a boiler ignition transformer i've come across a very similar unit and it was marked as being a boiler ignition transformer the other unit may well have been made by the same company which i think is based in south africa and is still in the go of designing stuff they've got a range of products including ones with the ultraviolet uh, ozone generation so we've got the live and neutral coming in here and the earth for the chassis, but also a centre tab earth for the transformer. It goes through an isolator for safety. That's interlocked the lid, so when, the only way you can open the lid is to turn it off before you can open it. We've got a green neon indicator, the time switch, and then a red neon indicator to show that the unit's active and the fan runs when it is active and also it powers the primary of the transformer. The secretary of the transformer has very high resistance windings, um, 30k on either side, so 60k resistance, impedance, whatever, um, that then feeds a dielectric barrier corona discharge unit. 
That's the glass layer with a solid metal layer on one side and then the mesh on the inside. And because this is AC across this and some current passes, and it's worth mentioning at this point in time, that this unit drew about 50 watts of power. Um, 50 watts will be divided between basically nothing for the need indicators and the time switch, but the fan will draw maybe about 5 watts perhaps, and the transformer will use the rest. And very little of that will probably be the energy that's been used to generate the corona discharge. It's most likely copper and iron losses, or in other words, it will just be heat dissipated from the transformer. But when that is applied across this, because it's AC, the current tries to pass backwards and forwards through sort of capacitive layers on either side, the mesh and the metal. Because it can't just spark directly across, it creates a corona discharge, lots of tiny capacitively coupled tendrils of discharge. And that, if we were able to see it with the unit, it's all hidden from view, but you'd see a purple glow there. And the fan blows air across that to create the output of ozone. Let's take a look at the construction inside and of the ozone generating electrodes. I'll find the right page for this. The construction is interesting. To give the electrical isolation because of the high voltage, they have two sections of pipe. This looks like a piece of black four inch pipe and this is three inch pipe with an end cap in it. And they're purely to support the tubes and keep them well away from the metal case and also to divert the ozonated air out the front of the unit. So the air is being drawn in by the fan and it's finding its way back through these tubes um, past the corona discharge and then out via this port. And there was some foam around this which had degraded quite badly. I don't know if that's just age because I think this is quite an old unit or it was partly, well it will partly have been the corona uh, generated ozone. Uh, the side view of that is there's a big pipe and they've got a screw clamping it down to the bottom of the hole at the top so they could get a screwdriver through to put that screw in. And the other pipe is presumably supported in the same way. And the glass tubes go through those with the outer clamp that's one side of the high voltage supply inside that black pipe and then the mesh and just that springy metal clip. I've shown that here. Here's a glass tube with the metal outside sleeve that is not really a significant ozone generation point. And then the stainless steel mesh just basically a rectangular piece of mesh rolled up and shoved in. And then this metal clip just put in and sprung out against it. And the reason they use stainless steel is because stainless and uh, silicone, which they've used as the adhesive between these two, are generally resilient to ozone, as is the reason they've used it for the case. The sort of, it's partly because it is sort of a food type industrial apparatus, but also the uh, resilience to ozone is helpful there. Now, it's worth mentioning that the reason it's got a time switch is pr probably because this was designed to be used in a food processing plant, maybe a factory, um, and would only come on at night when the place wasn't occupied. Now, this does not put out a huge quantity of ozone. It's not like the Chinese units that use a crappy high voltage power supply that puts out high frequency and they've got the ceramic plates and it's absolutely blazing with corona discharge. Um, this isn't like that, but the advantage, this one is a low output, but it's a very simple circuit, so it's going to be reliable. That boiler ignition transformer is rated for continuous operation and is simple enough, since it is basically just windings and a core, that it's going to last a very, very long time. I wonder how much use this got. I don't, don't really know. The, the thing looks a bit wrecked in the sense that all the outside fitments, like the cover on, the time switch and the, um, the fan filter input were all kind of damaged, but that's no great deal. And the unit does have a handle on top, and it's also got the rubber feet in the bottom, suggesting that it is designed for mobile use. Maybe it was used in a hotel. Maybe it was used in a factory. I'm not really sure. It may have just been a portable unit used for sterilising rooms to get rid of the smell of smoke when people had smoked in them. Um, other things like ozone is harmful, I have to say this, in large quantities. If you can smell ozone in a room, you walk in, there's too much ozone there, but it's also useful for sterilising things, so that kind of justifies this type of unit. It may even find applications where a place is occupied, but it's only producing enough ozone just to raise the ambient level a little bit, just to provide uh, extra sterilisation for food preparation to keep certain bacteria down. 
It's also worth mentioning that in the past that one of the earliest, well, I've got a vintage one. I made a video about an antique ozone generator. But another one, a very stylish one that is very hard to get, has interwoven tubes, neon tubes. One half are neon, the other half are argon and mercury just for visual effect. There's no direct electrical connection. Room. They've got an electrode from the transformer on the red neon tubes and the blue uh, argon mercury tubes. And the only coupling is capacitive coupling between them. And the nice thing about that is because the current flows and is capacitively coupled, they actually shimmer in orange and blue. But also, wherever the tubes are close to each other, they create that slight corona discharge and it just uh, cleans and sterilizes the air and gets uh, rid of bad odors and things like that. But that is it. An interesting unit. I've seen similar units about and I'm pretty sure they're still on the go and making the ultraviolet ones um, but uh, very novel uh, made in Africa product which is interesting I think they made them in Africa um, but there we have it the industrial ozone generator well worth getting to take apart <laughs>